Yeah, okay, for sure. My name is Keyshawn De Silva. Um, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, as you know. As they don't know, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, I'm not going to say that's a that's a that's a LA ass question too. That's how they press you. That's how they press you. That's how they uh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what How how did you get into fashion and art and acting and modeling in general? Like what do you do? How do you start? Dude, all this creative shit, I was honestly doing this since I was super little. I've been painting since I was like five years so, old. Like all ever since I can remember. I started taking shit seriously when they around I was 15. And I was like painting like on a consistent basis. I think I've been doing since I was 12, and Marley, he was going out doing photo shoots forever. That's the only thing I've done stuff, you know? So maybe like around 15 or 14, so that was all this creative shit started getting out. Yeah, this is what we're doing. This is what we're at. So from 15, 14 to now, I would say, like, where are you at now? What are you, what are you kind of doing now? Um, everything now, everything I do now is about actually, like, committing and getting back to doing shit. I love being direct about that. This is what I see. I see what I want to do, what I want to do it. Before it was like, this is a cool idea. And honestly, I guess it's always kind of been like that. But now it's like, I can, I feel like, I'm, now that I'm older, I can make everything come to real life. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything just looks like, okay, I wanna, if I want to do a gallery, I'll make a fuck ton of paintings of like, in the same, in the same, like, you know, style. And I'm gonna go to the gallery because this is what I want to do. I want to go shoot something, somebody, and do what I can to do that. You know what I'm saying? So let's talk about um, your debut gallery show, the Charlotte Show. Yeah. That's what it's um, called. How how did that kind of come to fruition? Uh, can you talk about the process? Honestly, it came together one day when I started out making a few pieces, and I was like, okay, a year actually like a little over a year ago, I made this first piece right here. Guy with the star eyes, and I essentially just wanted to make sure that I wanted to see in my house. I was going through this phase where I was obsessed over iconography and like you know the '70s and black superstars with afros like me. Because yeah, like nowadays I don't see nobody with an afro. Anybody, you know, and that's cool too. You know, fuck the haircuts. They got braids and shit, all that little dreads and shit. That's hard too. But I was trying to really pinpoint a time when I felt like African Americans were like not getting appropriated as much and appreciated a lot more than they than they are now. I'm not sure at the time they're also getting appropriated you know, yeah. it's happened forever. But you know I don't appreciate it. Like yeah, I wanted to just, like really put a magnifying glass on like shit that like when people actually appreciate the shit that people were doing instead of being like we can sell our fucking things. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's the type of shit that I want to see. I want to, I want to see all these paintings that I made because I'm going to put them in my house. That's like, I want to have like an art studio in my house that's like full of paintings. And then I was like, fuck it, I'm going to do that. Yeah. So how would you say the, um, the reception of the show was for everybody in the game? Um, and then we talked to a lot of people that said they were going to have to say that. I think, I mean, that's a, that's a funny question because when I think about it, like, it was one of the most experiences in the world. Since <laughs> that shit was like, we had like a line of like 200 kids here, 300 kids down this block, and it was just like over fucking lonely. You know, I had all my friends sure make sure everybody could come in and have a good time. So, I mean, for me, I think I thought it was on fire. You know, I thought it was really great for everybody to get here and have a good time. But it came to a point where people, like, there was police across the street pressing me and they gave me a $50,000 fine over me having a good ass time. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned a lot about the iconography. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, you are sitting on the star. Yeah. Um, We're sitting on the star. Star eyes. Star eyes. Yeah. But, um, you know, maybe obviously a lot of people are like, oh, it's not the star eyes. Yeah. Um, this big symbolic like, thing that you have on your star. I mean, I wanted to just in plain and simple terms, help people understand what like you look at stars and they shine. You know what I mean? That's what they that's what, they, that's what they, serve. they serve for me. You know what I'm saying? Like when I think of James Brown, when I think of fucking uh Lucy Collins, all those people, you know what I'm saying? Jean Michel Basquiat, all those people, all they did was fucking stars. They're stars. They're black stars. 
And to me, that was like everything that I wanted to emulate. Because like, like I said earlier, I just, I just feel like, I just really wanted to like, I, I love seeing the appreciated and get the fucking gift they deserve, you know? We get to watch these, we get to watch these stuff. Everybody, every, I, don't, I feel like everybody was just feeling like stuff. Every day that is a star at this point. So you could name a couple of people. Um, would you say that those individuals are a lot of your main influences? Would you say they're more today and like current era um, that kind of influence a lot of your work? They influence a lot of my work. A lot. I, I like. Those are people that I want to see like honed in and specified on for a very long time. And it was yeah, literally. Yeah. But no, and like I would just be sitting like watching interviews with them all fucking day long. Like I would pay and listen to interviews of all like James Brown. I, would, I watched the guy James Brown movie like, probably like four times in the span of that year and kind of this whole thing just so I could like understand and get and understand what it feels like to be that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what that's what the goal is. So what, where is he? You know what I'm saying? What's he on? What are they? So as a lot of people know, like the show, you featured some guest performances. Yeah. Um, hotel room. Ken Carson showed up. Uh, can you talk about what it was like working with them and what they contributed to the They show? were they were obviously cool as fuck. Hotel room came. Sweet guy. Really kind guy. Of yeah. He yeah, he was really he wild. Yeah. He just talked to him all day. Yeah, and he was like such he was super genuine. Really made me feel like I was like it was it was a hectic start for the show. So when we touched down, it was like, yo, I'm a I'm 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 i and adding on to that, when people showed up at the door, uh, there was RCP, there was guest entry, all of that. So for, for GA, it was either maybe from $20 for a ticket, or you could show up with the kids sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I noticed at the end of the night, there were just hundreds of sunflowers scattered around the whole venue. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about the idea behind that? I'm not even gonna lie to you. I initially came, but I was thinking I was in an Uber. <laughs> I, I was in an Uber coming back from the airport for some And uh, I was like, dude, I just like, what I want personally is for everybody that loves me to come to my show and give me some flowers. Because I love some flowers. Like, I want I want some flowers. Yeah. And yeah, so then I put it on, put it on my story. I was like, all right, so if you're pulling up, like, you're taking it into some flowers. <laughs> Bring me some flowers. And like GA, everyone from RCP knew what's up. Like, so many people. I had like my homie Coco rocking like the fattest bouquet of flowers ever. And it was just, it was insane. It was really, 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 really. Um, and they all just said, look, if you try to set them on the star and shit, you know, my team Yeah. <laughs> and fools were like thinking about the party and shit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, looking at all the art behind us, can you tell me about some of the stories of your pieces? Which one's your favorite piece? And what, what was the inspiration behind it? This one, you already know about this one. You already know about this one. This one right here we made um, actually on your rooftop. <laughs> and I mean, originally we're on the side, it's supposed to say, it still does the actual, the actual canvas and stuff. It says, the masks I have do not confine me. They did not come up to find me, they can find me. And it was just essentially just like trying to let people, or I guess just a way, it's like they're all coping. It's all coping shit, honestly. I'm not gonna hold you, it's all coping shit. This is a way for me to feel like no matter what anybody called me, I still am who I am, I'm still gonna be a star at the end of the day. You know, because I decided that I'm a star. You know, like I, I made that decision. Yeah, this is what this is. This is what we're doing. We're rocking up here, so. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, working with that too, what what advice would you give to uh, young African American creators that are maybe not in your shoes now, but would want to be, um, and they're kind of working towards where you are right now, or where you're working towards? What would you tell them? I would tell them it's all one. It's all. It is very possible. 
It, I won't say that it's easy. I will say that it can be easy, depending on the situation that you're in, you know? But, I don't know. Do you want to be in my shoes? Fuck being in my shoes. They should be in their shoes. They should be who the fuck they want to be. They should be like, yeah, I'm doing this shit myself right now. And then just keep in that bag. Because even if I didn't have this whole show out, I would still have all these pieces done. You know what I'm saying? And I, I would have them all and put them in my house. Like, this shit's for me. So do your shit for you. You can fuck with it. So in addition to a lot of your paintings, um, you also included these star bags. Can you tell me a little bit about the process of making these? Or at least the first clothing item or accessory you've ever made? These are definitely, yeah, the, the first piece that I ever decided to like, go out of my way and, you know, make something. And initially, I honestly never really wanted to step anywhere near making logos or anything like that. Because I just, I don't know, I just need my own yeah. I guess I thought I knew my <laughs> And now we're making bags. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, now we're, now, we're, now we're going out. These bags, I just want some people to have something to be able to take away from the show. Not everybody can take away a painting, you know, a print or something, but you can do that. But, you know, a lot of these, most of these are all handmade. These are they were made by hand. Hand stitch. Mm -hmm. Hand, hand dyed. <laughs> we fucking dyed this shit in a fucking sink. <laughs> and people, just, just so y'all can be able to take a photo of the So, you said we, can you talk a little bit about who you're working with and who a lot of your so, um, I don't, I don't, honestly, most of my friends are my like, are creative people. These right here, I did with my homie Luna and my homie Mason. Shout out to Luna and Mason. Um, and we did this shit in Mason's house and Luna's house. And then we honestly pulled up to the skate park one day and we were just like, like, we should get these guys. <laughs> and then we just sat there at the skate park fucking designing the stars and shit. Next day, we're at Lisa's house getting it done. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of folks, I mean shit. Fucking Yoni. Yoni's another person. And Omer they do attachments and yes, I'm not gonna have to Um they're sick as fuck. They're a huge inspiration of mine. Every time I'm in a and I'm proud of any sort of work and I want to do something more, push out more, you know, I was like, yeah, this is what you should do. It's they're always a great touch. So in addition to a lot of those influences back in the 70s, can you tell me about some people today and their influence in your work when it comes to the garments and shows? Yeah, I have this one homie. His name is Brian Giles. Damn. <laughs> oh my god, I have ADHD. Don't fucking blame me. Okay, I have one homie. Sick as fuck. He's a painter too. He, um, I'm not gonna go. I'm gonna keep, I'm, I'm gonna say his name. I'm not gonna say Because I don't, I don't, I don't know what he would want to say. He's sick as fuck. His name is Brian Giles. Y'all should look him up too. He's another black painter. <laughs> he he used to be a lot to that him. Um, Tyler the fucking creator, bro. To be honest. Yeah. Like every, everything I see that man do is just like he has something that he for himself wants to get done and he sees it through. And that's everything that I want to emulate. Like I, I, I have something I want to do and I want to bring it to life so that if other people don't experience it, I can create people that I don't want to experience it myself. Yeah. So we're yeah. talking about that too. At the end of the day, what what do you want to be known for? What do you want your legacy to be? Yeah. I want to be known for fuck man. The deep question. That's a big ass question. Yeah. Hopefully something positive for people that they can appreciate feel like they took something from. I want everybody to know. Right now I want everybody to know that whatever they want to do is very possible. Yeah. Yeah. Like they literally, if you want to create a whole world for yourself, what the fuck? If you want to create a whole world for yourself, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the upcoming months, weeks, years, whatever, what what mediums are you looking to expand into? What what can we what are we I need to make so much more furniture, bro. More furniture. That shit is so hard. The chair is success. The chair is fire as fuck. Yes, I want to make it. As fuck. 
I want to make coffee tables, I want to make mini chairs, I want to make stools, I want to make like everything. We can couches, like all that shit. Yeah, I want. I, I like honestly want like someone in the world to have other than myself. Obviously, I'm gonna have myself. But someone in the world to have their whole house interior design done by me. Sean. Sean's house. Yeah. Yeah. Other than me, Sean's house, someone else's house. It's gonna look like that. So as you know, our bot YouTube has recently started up. Who, who do you think we should bring on next? Who, who do you think is next up? I definitely think there's a few people who are at the top of my mind. My mind I want to shout out because I want I want you guys to be attached to Attachments, you yeah. there? You don't need no man. They need one. Yeah. They're so hard. You don't even understand what they Nobody gets what they have next. Their shit is insane. I've seen all their stuff and I didn't understand it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're sick as fuck. They're sick as fuck. They're nice. No, I'm excited to do that. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on with today. For sure, man. Thanks for having me. Always love. Always. <laughs> Alright, y'all. Thank you.